a result of that in the lives of these people. John chapter 4, verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman who testified, he told me all that ever I did. They said, nobody could have done that except Jesus, except the Savior, except the Messiah. He told you everything you ever did and was meeting you for the first time. Because of that, they were convinced and then they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 8, chapter 8 of John. Many believed. Thank God I'm one of the many that have believed. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is my Savior, is my Lord, is my healer, is my redeemer. Because of what he has done in other people's lives and in my life, I must keep on believing. And as you keep on believing, miracles will keep on happening in your life in Jesus' name. John chapter 8, we're looking at verse 30. John chapter 8, verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. You see, you will be like an exception if you don't believe. It will be like, you know, maybe the devil has totally put you inside a bag and then he's put you in a dungeon and he blinded your eyes and he stopped your ears and then you cannot even think at all. Look at all these people in this chapter. They all believe. Many believed on him. In that other chapter, many believed on him. Now it is your turn. Thank God you believe. I said, thank God you believe. Verse 30, as he speak these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And then it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth will make you free. Every bondage taken away in your life. John chapter 12, verse 11. We're following through with the thought that when they saw, they were convinced, they were persuaded, and they believed. John chapter 12, verse 11. Because by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. That's the normal consequence. That's the natural consequence. Because they were fully persuaded, so they went and they believed. Thank God, I am persuaded. If you are persuaded, you say it better than that. In Romans, thank God you are persuaded. The Lord will fulfill it in your life in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, verse 21. Romans chapter 4, verse 21. Be fully persuaded. You see that? Not only persuaded and not half-heartedly persuaded. It says be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. He staggered not at the promise of God. Even when Christ said, even though he had been there for days, I'm going to raise him up because of the resurrection and the life. He got there and it happened. And he's here tonight and it is going to happen. I said, he said, tonight is going to happen. Look at verse 22. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. That is, when he believed like that, the Lord gave that account to his righteousness. Now, it was not treated for his sake alone. That it was imputed to him, but for us also. To whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And because he's done that for us, we're going to receive in Jesus' name. Uh, let's come back. Let's come back to this John chapter eleven. Let's see some other people. These ones they had another heart. They had another mind. They had a problem. Look at them. John chapter eleven. I'm reading from verse forty-six. From verse forty-six, and some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. 
the Pharisees at this time were not there. Normally, they, they'll, they'll be in places like this, anywhere Jesus was. But because uh, what had happened here is that Mary and Martha were bereaved. And these people came to sympathize with them. Because of Lazarus who had died. And they were there and they saw the miracle happen. When Jesus said, Lazarus come forth, he came forth. They were so surprised. And they saw the Pharisees, they were not around. They should have seen this. They should know that this Jesus is the Lord of glory. Is the Lord of life. Is the resurrection and the life. They should know that this Jesus Christ can do all things. With men, this is impossible, but not with Jesus. It's like God. He can do everything. And so they went to tell the Pharisees. What was the attitude of the Pharisees? Look at this, verse 47. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council, a committee, and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Nobody could deny those miracles. This man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. They'll come and they'll take away both our place and our nation. You know what? They were about their place, protecting their place, protecting their position, protecting their religion. Their hearts were not right with God. They were hardened by religion. They were hardened by tradition. What brought joy to other people brought jealousy on them and in them. Have you noticed the people who are not saved, the people who are not born again, or the people who are backsliding, the people who are not living right? What brings joy to everybody brings jealousy in their own heart. And these Pharisees, instead of having joy, there was jealousy. What brought salvation to other people brought condemnation, damnation to them. Because now they said, this Jesus is working so many miracles. But that's good. They said, no, it's not good. Because if he continues like that, people will not recognize our position, religious position. They will not recognize our authority, religious authority. They will not respect our tradition. And it is better for Lazarus to remain in the grave than to come out of the grave than for our tradition to be forgotten. You see the kind of... heart they had. Others believed. In fact, it says many believed but instead of believing, they were bitter. I pray you'll not be like that. Their hearts were blinded. Their eyes were blinded. They became a barrier and barricade barring them from heaven, from eternal life, from everlasting life, and from eternal peace and rest. What did they think of doing uh, as a result of the miracle that Jesus Christ performed? Uh, look at this. This one is almost unbelievable. Look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. I'm reading here from verse 9. John chapter 12 from verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Look at verse 10. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Think about that. They were so bitter. They were so angry. They couldn't see the goodness of the Lord or the glory of the Lord. They said this Lazarus that became an instrument in truly the hand of the Lord for many to believe we're going to kill him. We're going to put him to death. The jealousy was so much. The bitterness was so much. The hardness of heart was so much. And their unrighteousness came to the fore, came to the front because now they were not willing to believe. Look at uh, verse, uh, look at verse uh, 10 there. But the chief uh, priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. I pray your heart will not be like that. 
they were not entering the kingdom and they were not going happy for those who are entering into the kingdom. Uh, look at uh, Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 52. Thank God you are not like this. I'm not like this. I will not be like this. Whatever will make you to be like this, the Lord should take it away from your heart in Jesus' name. No bitterness in your heart. No jealousy in your heart. No hatred for the truth in your heart. You love the truth and you love the miracles of God. In Luke chapter 11 verse 52, Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. You see, because they were not there, because they did not see the miracle, because Lazarus was not their relative, and they wanted to kill him because many people want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They were not going to enter the kingdom of God, and the people that wanted to enter, they were hindering. You will not be a barrier to anyone. You will not hinder anyone. You will not stop anyone that wants to get into the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Religion will not blindfold you. Tradition will not deaden your heart. You come alive in Jesus' name. We're coming to point three now. This point three is the prophecy. The prophecy, the truth announced for all sinners. We're coming to chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 49. Look at verse 49. And one of them, one of those Pharisees, who did not like what had happened, one of them, one of those religious people who wanted to protect religion, protect tradition, and would rather stay in darkness, spiritual darkness, one of them, and one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all. He didn't, he didn't tell her what he was saying himself. He said, ye know nothing at all. In verse 50, now consider that it is expedient for us, look at this, that one man should die for the people. He was prophesying, but he didn't know. Look at this prophecy, that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. Isn't that exactly what Jesus came to do? He was going to die for the people so that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And Caiaphas did not know that was prophesying. Look at verse 51. And they speak he not of himself, but being the high priest that year he prophesied. He prophesied. What did he do? Say it aloud. Let me hear you. Say it as if you believe. He prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Look at verse 52. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that has scattered abroad. That means then he gave that prophecy without knowing that he gave the prophecy. But listen to this. He gave a great prophecy. A scriptural prophecy, a sound prophecy, a true prophecy. He gave an accurate prophecy that Jesus Christ will die a sacrifice for the people, for the nation, and for people beyond that nation. It was a sure prophecy. It was an authentic prophecy. It was a right prophecy. It was an essential prophecy because without that prophecy, without the death of Jesus Christ, nobody will be saved. And so Jesus was going to die. He was going to give his life so that the people who are in sin will be saved. Actually, it was a fundamental prophecy. Every other prophecy in the word of God was hanging on the prophecy of Jesus Christ going to the cross, going to Calvary, and going to die. It was a foundational prophecy. It's a prophecy that's a foundation to any other prophecy in the word of God. It was an affirmed prophecy. As we look at it from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it's a prophecy that was affirmed. It was a prophecy that was asserted everywhere in the Bible. But listen to this. He, the high priest who made the prophecy, 
did not understand the prophecy and did not benefit from the prophecy. Very serious, very serious that a person will make a great prophecy like that, a central prophecy like that, an essential prophecy like that, and yet he didn't have any benefit of that prophecy. You see, there are people who preach and they may preach as something sure, something fundamental, something foundational, something essential, something authentic, something true, and yet they are not beneficiaries of what they are preaching. They preach salvation, they don't benefit in that salvation. They preach holiness, they don't benefit in that holiness. They preach healing, they don't benefit in that healing. They preach deliverance, they don't benefit in that deliverance. Like Caiaphas, who made the prophecy and yet did not benefit at all. I will be a partaker. I said I will be a partaker. Hey, don't, don't, be, don't be somebody running around and you know you're speaking sound doctrine you're giving sound doctrine there but you're not benefiting out of that sound doctrine you talk about sanctification and you talk about a new heart and you talk about a new life and it is not like that in your life you talk about a family one man one wife until death do us part but you're not a beneficiary of that kind of a prophecy because you are not allowing Jesus Christ to do something in your heart you know it you you seem to know where it is in the Bible but the benefit is not there today everything will change John chapter 18 I'm reading from verse 14 John chapter 18 look at verse 14 here now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people well Caiaphas, what you are saying is not something new. Jesus himself even said it. Jesus himself even said it. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Matthew chapter 20, and we're reading from verse 28. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, look at the prophecy here. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus said so. So, Caiaphas, you are not telling us anything new. In fact, we can go as far back as Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. And see what Isaiah said, that this one man, the Christ, the Messiah, he was going to give his life for the salvation of many. So, what Caiaphas said, it was true, although he himself was not a truthful person. In Isaiah chapter 53, I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 4. Sure he has borne our griefs he'll bear your griefs and carry our sorrows carry all your sorrows away yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all.